All right, so in this particular lab, we focus on cellular respiration. Okay, and this is a series of reactions um, and processes that are utilized to maintain the homeostasis of an organism. And the way in which it works is it takes some carbon skeleton, typically glucose, and oxygen, and eventually through these different stages produces several different products um, and byproducts. Um, it produces carbon dioxide, water, and most importantly, adenosine triphosphate, which is, of course, energy that organisms use to do work and maintain, again, their homeostasis. So what we wanted to do first off is we wanted to look at several different um, elements of this process. Um, now in the presence of oxygen, the respiration that occurs is known as aerobic respiration. In the absence of oxygen, we have what's known as anaerobic respiration. Uh, in this lab, we looked at three different scenarios. Um, we looked at two that were aerobic and one that was anaerobic. It technically is an anaerobic process. Um, so, one last thing you should know about this um, that you should have gotten from lecture is that cellular respiration um, in terms of the citric acid cycle and oxidative phosphorylation occur inside of the mitochondria while glycolysis, um, which is the initial breakdown of the sugar into pyruvate, occurs in the cytoplasm. Um, and we'll be looking at um, a, an anaerobic process referred to as fermentation uh, where we will be looking at how an organism breaks down glucose and eventually produces um, a byproduct of carbon dioxide along with alcohol in the absence of oxygen. So let's talk about the three experiments. Okay, so the first experiment what we're going to look at is O2 consumption measure metabolic rate. Okay. Outside of that, we're going to also then look at CO2 production in plant embryos. Finally, we're going to look at alcohol fermentation, and we're going to be looking specifically at the CO2 that's produced during alcohol fermentation. Okay, so let's go ahead and first start off with O2 consumption to measure metabolic rate, and then we'll talk about the rest of these processes. So, O2 consumption. The organism that we used to perform this exercise was a mouse. Okay, and the way that this exercise worked was first things first, we had an apparatus that housed a mouse. inside this apparatus, and we had a series of tubes, plungers, and other things coming out of this apparatus. One of the more important ones was this piece of tubing that had water in it. Okay. The water is level on both sides initially. Okay. And so, Ideally, what would happen is, as the mouse needs to perform cellular respiration, it will inhale oxygen, and that will create a vacuum that will cause this tubing to act like a straw. 
basically what will happen is the water level will start to rise in this direction and lower in this direction. But there's a problem with this, and that problem is the fact that currently the mouse inhales oxygen, creating the vacuum, and then exhales carbon dioxide. As it exhales the carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide is going to increase the pressure, causing the water level to go back to where it was initially. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to remove CO2 from this equation. And the reason we're doing all of this is to measure metabolic rate, we need three things. Okay? We first need, as this implies, the milliliters of oxygen consumed. Okay? If it's a rate, that tells us we're going to need time as a measurement as well. So we're going to need the amount of hours. And finally, if we're going to compare this metabolic rate between organisms, in other words, think about it, if I were just to say, okay, milliliters of oxygen per hour, okay, I can breathe more milliliters of oxygen per hour than a mouse can because I'm larger than that mouse. But does that mean that my metabolic rate is faster th than a mouse's? Okay? We can't compare those two things right now. So the final unit that we're going to need is the mass of the animal. And that's how we're going to be able to compare one organism to another. So we need milliliters of oxygen, we need hours, and we need grams. Okay? So back to it. We want to remove carbon dioxide so we can measure the oxygen. So what we added were these pellets in the bottom of this chamber that are called potassium hydroxide pellets. And their role is that they actually absorb the CO2. They absorb carbon dioxide. Okay. So we obtain the mass of the mouse in grams. We absorb the CO2. Now what we do is we allow the mouse to breathe in oxygen over a certain period of time. And over that period of time, the water level changes, becomes unleveled. And then what we do is we inject oxygen into the system to push the water level back to where it will be level. When we push the oxygen in enough to where the water becomes level, we see how much oxygen we actually had to place in there, and that gives us the milliliters of oxygen. And then all we have to do is take the milliliters of oxygen that we had divided by the time. So if you obtained it in seconds, you'd have to first convert that to minutes and then convert that number to hours. If you obtained it in minutes, you divide by 60 to convert it into hours. That gives us our milliliters of oxygen per hour that the animal would breathe. And then we take that number and we just divide it by the mass of the, the animal. And that gives us our overall rate of respiration. Typically, in warm-blooded organisms, what we see is the smaller the organism, the higher the metabolic rate. The larger the organism, the lower the metabolic rate. So that is the O2 consumption as a measurement of the metabolic rate.